<laughs> Hello, everyone. There we go. All ready to go. Just a few minutes late today. My apologies. How is everybody doing out there? My name is Mary Cronert, and of course I'm here on behalf of the Living Room Community Art Studio with another Wednesday Virtual Art Hive live stream afternoon. Boy, that title makes it sound really amazing and exciting, and it is. It's very exciting. Hello, Shelley. Welcome. This is just an hour and a half where we get to hang out online. I make art. I play with color, texture, lines, whatever, with whatever mediums or modalities I happen to have at hand. And you can make art along with me if you like, or you can simply sit and listen or watch, absorb that creative energy. You can share what you're working on with me. I always love to learn what our community members are creating out there, especially since we haven't been able to connect in person to share that work. Oh yeah, and you know what, Shelly? Shelly says, been a rough time, but you are here and you are here. And Brandon, oh, hello, Brandon. Oh, yep, and excited about the bus. There's a lot of interesting, exciting news out there, and I hope we have a chance to chat about all of it. But you know what, if you are out there and you know maybe you've been having a rough time, maybe things have been okay for you, regardless of where you're at, I want to invite you to take some time for yourself this afternoon. Give yourself permission to play, to create, to explore, to do whatever you need to do to help you have your best day moving forward, whatever that might look like, whatever that might be. If it involves art, that's fantastic. But perhaps you just want to listen or watch and, you know, do something else like fold your laundry, unload the dishwasher, I don't know, all those other little things that can pile up around us. That's okay too. And of course, you're welcome to join in the chat. Hello, Sandra. Hello, hello, hello. It's so good to see you here. You know what? Yeah, you can join the chat, say hello if you like, but if you're feeling a little more quiet today, that's okay too. Don't feel like you have to join in the chat for us to appreciate you being here or to feel like you're contributing to the creative energy because I just know you are. Wherever you might be in the world, whatever time you might be watching this while it's live or once it's been archived, I know that you've, you're contributing to this. You're a part of our community wherever you might be and we appreciate you so very much. So, so very much. And it's so good to see you. And Lottie, hello, Lottie. And oh, thank you. Thank you. Lots of congratulations about the bus coming in. And it is, it's exciting. It's also a little bit scary. Yeah. And yeah, the living room, we never really do anything bit by bit, do we? We just kind of go in wholeheartedly, jumping in, both feet, all the metaphors, all the analogies you can think of. We're there. It's so good to see you folks joining us. Yeah, and hello, Simone. And I hope everyone has been having a lovely long weekend. Here in Canada, we've just come out of the Victoria Day weekend, which gave some folks a nice time to relax and just hang out, chill out over the weekend. And we were really lucky. It was a really warm, lovely, sunny weekend here. Uh, but for some folks, that's not their thing. So right now in Oshawa, anyways, we have some overcast skies. It feels like a thunderstorm is coming on. So I know there are lots of folks out there who love a good storm. I happen to be one of them. So let's see what happens. I think our gardens could all do with a little bit of rain. And Nicole, welcome, Nicole. And Sandra, yes. So, and Teresa, oh my goodness, everybody's here today. Uh, and Sandra's saying, this is the first time to join the live stream in a while. And that is true. We missed you, but we've been thinking about you. And if, like Sandra, you're someone out there and you haven't, you know, been while, been by a live stream in a long time, that's okay. That's okay. I know everyone is so busy doing different things to take care of themselves and move themselves forward. It's just good to have you here when you are able to be here. And know that we're thinking of you and sending out lots of love even when you can't be here. And Brandon saying, yeah, yeah, yes, please, rain is needed, indeed. And I know there are a lot of green spaces out there that have been experiencing a kind of drought, which is a little bit scary, especially for our farmers out there doing all that hard work. And of course, Shelley, you're right, on Victoria Day weekend here in Canada, there's generally a lot of fireworks going off as well. So <laughs> in our neighborhood, there was definitely a lot, and not always at night. People like setting off fireworks, well, at night, all throughout the night, in the morning, in the afternoon. I live in a really interesting neighborhood. I think people just like fire. That's something to think on. Anyways, hello, Ashley. So good to see you here. And Ashley's saying the bus looks awesome, so needed. And well, yeah, yeah, it's, um, 
It's the next step for the Living Room Community Art Studio right now, and we're super exciting about it. As you can tell, um, it's in repairs right now. It looks like everything is going really, really well, and we hope, we hope, 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 hope to have it back in Oshawa by the end of the week. So look for more videos and more updates coming your way soon about what the next steps are, which for us will be, of course, converting it uh, taking it to our friends at PK Vans and that con like that conversion community who loves doing stuff with schoolies and seeing how we can transform the bus into what we imagine it to be in the future. And once we have that, we want to be out in community as soon as possible. So we want to be out there delivering workshop kits, hosting activities if it's safe to do so. We want to be visiting your communities. Now Ontario and Kawartha region will be a priority because of our lovely Trillium grant, but that doesn't like Durham region, how it, like I think around Durham region, Kawartha neighborhoods. Yeah, we can go all, all throughout those communities. Uh, but of course that doesn't stop us from going other places as well. So if you live a little further afield, we're here for you and we can figure something out to come on and visit you. And Wendy, hello, Wendy. <laughs> and Wendy's saying, this is exciting. Yeah, 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 it's exciting. Insurance is where we're at right now. Anyone who works or deals with insurance, that is, um, that's a really interesting world, right? Yeah, we're really lucky though. We have uh, some amazing folks fighting for us and championing us in that journey because getting commercial vehicle insurance these days, who knew, it's kind of tricky. But again, the folks who are working with us, we've been so lucky all along the way in this journey. And we've had people who, well, they're just as passionate about this project as we are. So that's, I think, such an important part of the process, having that passion, that dedication to see something through, to imagine it in the first place. And I know what the living room does. We're not a normal kind of business, right? So it's it can be difficult for some folks out there to see what we're seeing and to understand and appreciate, more importantly, the community, appreciate the community as much as we do. and. Yeah, it is an adventure, right? So if folks want to create bus themed art today, go for it. If you have any other questions about uh, the mobile art studio project, feel free to ask them as we go along the way. I'll do my best to answer them. I don't have all the answers right now, but uh, I've got some and I've got some dreams. Definitely have a lot of dreams. So feel free to ask those questions. And if you have ideas or thoughts about what you want or need, the mobile art studio to be, let me know too. We obviously can't incorporate all of them. However, you never know what idea will lead to the next best idea or the next, you know, awesome, interesting, cool thing that I haven't had a chance to think about with my brain the way it is. You just never know. And that's right, Sandra's saying, I would love to see the bus work its way down here someday. Sandra, you know it, it is absolutely possible. And not only possible, but it's why we, you know, the pandemic caused a lot of really difficult things, a lot of difficult decisions to be made, especially, you know, for smaller organizations that didn't have the infrastructure to, you know, survive something like this. Um, however, for us, that difficult decision has actually, has maybe, maybe opened us up to more things, more wonderful things, greater potential, more possibilities to live creatively, to connect with communities, to connect communities to one another through art. There's so many interesting things that we can do with the mobile art studio. And I'm sure this next year will be a huge growing, uh, growing edge for us as we discover what's possible, what's not as possible to do. Um, and yeah, we, as we meet, we meet new people in new ways. It's so exciting. And Sandra, we are totally thinking about you. We're thinking about everyone. Uh, like we love Oshawa, but we're hoping that this expands a little bit even beyond Oshawa, throughout Durham region, into other areas, other kinds of events that we haven't even had a chance to think about. Oh goodness, hello Em, so good to have you here. Oh my goodness, it's good to see ya. Um, yeah, so keep those questions coming if you like, your thoughts, your ideas, your visions, if you'd like to make mobile art studio or bus themed art, feel free. Uh, today, I'm gonna be working on, um, some oil pastel stuff. Last week's uh, live stream really inspired me. I liked pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I liked questioning myself as I went and not just doing the things I ordinarily do. 
So this, yeah, Ajax Pickering, you got it, Ashley. The bus can go there too. Um, so this week I want to continue pushing myself. I want to revisit some uh, techniques that I haven't used in a very long time. And just, yeah, the idea of those themes, like the metaphors behind certain things, like breaking through, um, working your way through the darkness to the other side of things. I've been thinking a lot about those things this week and the difficult and challenging journeys that so many of us take in so many ways. And, you know, how we use art to move through those times, the resiliency that we carry within ourselves that we may not even realize until we encounter difficult or challenging things. So, yeah, kind of celebrating that and thinking of those thunderclouds that, you know, might be coming our way and how even thunder and storms can transform things, bring new life to new situations. All of those things are in my head today, so feel free to join me and create along with that if you like. And yes, I'm saying finally landed here. Well, we're so glad to see you landing here. Miss ya. And let's see what I can do here. And I'll be keeping everyone up to date as we go as well. I know I've been teasing everyone with um, the thought of another writer's group coming back, a writer's Zoom, and that will happen, I promise. So all you writers, all you creative writers out there, it is in the works, we're figuring it out. And uh, tell you what, I'm gonna put something out there. I'm gonna say next Wednesday, next Wednesday at 10 a.m. We are going to have a writer's group, a writer's room, a writer's Zoom room. I think that's what we can call it, maybe, uh, where we can get together and have creative writing prompts and sparks to get us started on our way. And, you know, we might have different hosts for that, that workshop as well. We'll figure it out as we go. And hello, Barb. Barb says, so very exciting. Are you going to decorate the outside of the bus with art? I can see this vibrant, multicolored vehicle driving around. Barb, of course we're going to decorate the outside of the bus. Of course we are. We've got lots of exciting and interesting things planned. Um, but we know what we do know is we want it to be something beautiful. We want the bus to be something that, well, people see coming from a while off, like a ways off. We don't want it to just be like an ordinary bus. It's the living room we're talking about here. It needs to have that living room vibe. Um, but we want it to be something that can be at home in a lot of different environments. We want it to be at home, you know, sitting outside the Robert McLaughlin Art Gallery or at, you know, field trip festival and, you know, music festival in Toronto. We want it to be able to go up north. We want it to go down south. We want to east, west, all the places. We want it to be something that finds itself at home in pretty much any situation. But we want people to know that it's a creative thing. <laughs> And, you know, as far as the funding we have and the funding we will continue to raise will take us, we're going to keep innovating with that. I would love, of course, to have, you know, solar panels and I'd love to have part of the bus be a green bus and have plants on it. But I just don't know if that's possible right now. So we're going to dream really big, but start small in classic Art Hive way. Dream big, start small. And then over the years, we can build upon it as we go. And Nicole says, a pilot did something beautiful over Curtis this weekend. <laughs> they made a smiley face in the sky. That's lovely. A smiley face in the sky. That's lovely for everyone. And what do I want to do here? Aha, I'm going to test something out, folks. Last week, our camera was going in and out of focus. But this week, I think we fixed the problem. So I'm going to start with another spiral and see what we can do with it. Just to ground, like ground myself and bring me into a, a creative headspace to move on to the next thing. So bear with me. And if you want to grab a pen or a marker or a paintbrush, crayon, whatever you might have at hand, and you'd like to join me in creating a spiral, go for it. And Nicole says, yep, a magic school bus. It might be. It might very well be. And Ashley, yay, <laughs> replying to Nicole with Mary being Mrs. Ms. Frazzle uh, behind the wheel. Now, I gotta be honest, I gotta come clean about this. Um, I don't think I've ever watched The Magic School Bus. And there might be people out there because I don't know what, what phenomenon it really was. I think it's part of my homework now to watch that show to figure out what all the references will be because it's not the first time I've been compared to Ms. Frazzle. And I think I take that as a compliment. 
but I think I must be well versed if uh, we're actually creating a bus now. Now it won't be a passenger bus. In fact, we're going to be removing all of the seats for space, for storage, for supplies. My spiral is moving along quite, quite quickly today. Now, is that a mirror of where my mind is at? Just listening to the sound. All right, let's leave that there. And Ashley is explaining Miss Frazzle. Yeah, the Miss Frazzle took taking all the kids on adventures. Uh, I, yeah, I've heard that. I understand that. I think I, yeah. What does that really look like in the end? I don't know. Will I be taking everyone here on adventures? I can't say that. I think folks take me on adventures. I think that's the way that looks. And Brennan says, yes, it's a compliment. She's a smart lady. Well then, I'll definitely take that. And I'll need to watch the show. So... Let's find a link, a YouTube link. Does anyone have a thread out there for Magic School Bus? I need a link to do a deep dive. <laughs> I'm just echoing that spiral, but using color to build upon it. And that's a little too on the nose. Let's see what I want here. Let's add in some orange. That day where you really want to work with oil pastels, but you can only find the small set. It's funny, for the longest time we wanted to have... Oh, so M saying, I, I'm new to the group, can you explain the bus project to me? Of course I can. So, we had a studio space, an actual storefront studio space, where people used to come to make art and connect with one another inspire one another. The studio was lovely. We had a front porch with rocking chairs. We had a back garden. Kind of a make-do, a making-do with what you have back garden that just grew over time and began to take over the parking lot, which was our secret plan. Uh, but during the pandemic, we realized that that would be something difficult to maintain, even with all the different supports that were out there. We fundraise to keep the studio project going. We're a grassroots organization and even though you know we do a lot of awesome stuff in the community um, and with our amazing community uh, we don't have access to the same kind of supports that a lot of larger organizations do so but the closures and the safety issues we really 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 had to examine what we do why we do it and what we wanted to, it to look like moving forward because we knew that you know surviving the next couple of years going into and coming out of a pandemic was going to be really difficult and of course recognizing you know that everything grows and evolves and the living room every art hive in its own way is a work of living art it grows it evolves it responds to the needs of the community the different trends that occur in the community uh, so it felt like a good time for us to grow and change and try something different. So as sad as it was to do this, we closed the studio space. We let go of our lease. And now there's a fantastic uh, grocery store in there. I think it's a West Indian grocery store, which is amazing. And I'm looking forward to going in there and grabbing some roti. But um, for us, we knew it was time, it was time to change and so, well, we wrote a grant to the Ontario Trillium Foundation um, asking for some support, some funding to help us purchase a vehicle that we could transform into a mobile art studio. So rather than having a studio where people came to us, we would take the studio to them. And we would take the studio into the community, out to different events in the community, and continue that uh, placemaking tradition. But, uh, yeah. 
meeting people where they're at, meeting the people where they're at truly. And so that's what happened. Originally, we were looking for a cube van. Uh, originally, we had all these dreams of making something really extraordinary and funky um, and having something open up like a treasure box and too complicated. <laughs> so we've, again, taken that dream and really broken it down, bubbled it down, distilled it down to the essentials, the things that we believe are really important, the magic, what's like where the real magic is at with our art hive. And for us, the magic was always the people and the things they created together, not necessarily the space in which they created it. So that's about placemaking and you don't need four walls to create a place. So we're going to use a vehicle to do that. Cube vans were too difficult to find during the pandemic. They became, you know, just hugely in demand because of all the delivery services, I imagine. So it's funny, years ago, we used to joke about creating a bus, a mobile art studio bus. Um, and it's really, really funny how after all this time, the solution that worked out for us the best was a bus. We found a bus with, you know, lower, like low mileage on it. Um, it was in great condition. The people who had it were carrier, like a school bus, like transportation carrier. So it had been taken care of over the years. And it was one of those moments when we saw it, we knew it was the right thing. It spoke to us. It was quirky. It was strange. It would be a little bit different than what we were originally imagining, but we're so, so very excited to see where it goes. Um, yeah. Yeah, a bus. So the mobile art studio project will now be housed, homed in a bus that will travel from community to community. People won't necessarily come on to the bus. Hello, Carlos. Welcome. Um, it won't be like that. We tend, like when we're explaining it to people, we kind of say, imagine a really quirky food truck. But instead of selling tacos, we will be sharing creative arts experiences, workshop kits, hopefully be able to shoot some of our live streaming and YouTube and, you know, TikTok stuff on the bus, uh, just to give it a different energy, a different atmosphere, shake things up a little bit. We might be able to have, we're hoping to have artists uh, in residencies over the years to come. So different artists will take over the bus and perhaps embed in communities. There's so many different things we can do. And of course we can travel around the world or around Canada, at least, uh, Canada and North America, as long as we take really good care of it. I'm just going on and on. You can tell I've got the bus on the brain. And M saying Miss Frizzle is such a, oh, kindred spirit and asks her students to wonder about the world and makes learning exciting. Okay. Yeah, M, I really like that a lot. I got to look up this Miss Frizzle. Yeah, maybe it sounds like there's a tattoo in my future. How many people out there have a Miss Frizzle tattoo? I wonder. Hmm. And uh, nice, yes, spirally, Carlos admiring my spirally and the bus project. It, it does sound amazing, doesn't it? We'll see, one step at a time. It's really difficult for me. I get so, 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 so excited. Uh, I have to remind myself to just stay in the moment, one day at a time, one step at a time, and the next step, the step we're on right now, of course, insurance. It's not content creation worthy, I'm sure, but uh, all that nuts and bolts stuff is super important and I always forget how consuming it can be. And for anyone else out there who runs an art hive, who knows the art hive world, oftentimes it's those little things that uh, we forget. The art making, the community creation, all of that. In the end, that's easy. That kind of happens on its own. If you get all the things around it in a good enough place, that deliciousness just bubbles away and happens on its own. But setting the stage for that, that's where we're at right now. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. And Nicole, you're right. We're going to have to name the bus. <laughs> uh, some people have said that maybe we should have a contest or maybe every month we have a different name for the bus. The mobile art studio sounds a little bit removed, doesn't it? A little bit clinical. Yeah, the living room bus, the living room art bus. I imagine it'll probably be something like that. All right, what do I want to do? Hmm. But of course, if people have suggestions for what we can name the bus, please feel free to share them in the comments. I'm always open. And you never know, right? You never know which one will stick. 
So I'm going to be working, experimenting, playing with Scrafito today. I'm probably not saying that correctly, but again, that idea of breaking through, scratching through, moving through, some, you know, being able to make use of layers, the layers of experience to move forward. Something in Scrafito that is speaking to me today, and I'm not exactly sure why, but let's see. And of course, with naming the bus, just back to that subject. It might be a situation where we need to meet the bus and see it completed in order to move forward, right? <laughs> I'm saying the mobile arts do the MAS, the mass, the mass. That sounds, that sounds intense. It does. Super important. Critical mass. <laughs> oh boy, my brain. It is one of those uh, things also that can become a little like, whew, the responsibility of naming a bus, right? Hello, David. Uh, hello, hello, hello. So David's saying, you'd think a community-minded arts endorsing insurance firm would sponsor the bus. <laughs> well, David, do you, <laughs> do you have some suggestions? <laughs> we are very much open. And of course, that is one of the things we're super excited about as well. Not to, you know, one of the, the most frequently asked questions we have for, uh, the living room and how we've managed over the years is always about funding because when you're starting something that wants to make art for free with people that's not a proper business model that's that's ridiculous <laughs> but we manage and the truth is we hustle i think that's the only way to put it we hustle 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 and but one of the things we're excited with the bus is that for the first time ever, we'll actually be able to put logos and sort of like logo representation, as they call it, or a sponsorship uh, representation on the bus so that as we're driving around, people will be able to recognize those businesses, those organizations that sponsor us. So, for example, uh, we're going to be having a giant, you're going to see the Trillium Foundation logo on the back of that bus because they they've been a huge part of making this happen, right? But for other folks out there who are interested, just email me, info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org. <laughs> ah, and Teresa suggesting Mary's Sunshine Creative Art Bus. Yeah, but then it becomes about me, Teresa, right? It would be like saying Miss Frizzle's art bus. No, it's the magic bus. Now, if I'm going to be referencing that, I definitely need to watch it. Sorry, Miss Frizzle, wherever you might be. <laughs> and Crystal, hello, Crystal. Oh, wow. Crystal putting it out there would love to help you with designing of the bus. Thank you. Be careful what you wish for. I'm going to put that in my pocket. Thank you so much, Crystal. That's lovely. And again, how we've been astonished with people coming forward and putting themselves on the line. And and like David, you know, we've had such amazing people champion this project so far in the difficult areas where there's expertise, you know, that I do not have. Insurance, believe it or not, is one of those areas. But there are people out there who fight. There's people out there who want to help interesting things happen, who want to support their community and ensure that creativity, that connection, that those wonderful relationships continue and grow and evolve. And I can't wait to, in time, recognize each one of those people and how they've helped move this project forward. And Nicole says, bumper stickers. Yep, yep. Oh, and court, wow, 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 okay. Comments flying. Jay, hello, Jay. Jay saying there's a mobile art studio bus in the UK called Aren't We There Yet? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going to need to check that out. Aren't We There Yet? Oh, Jay, if you could put a link in the chat so that we could all visit and uh, 
and give a shout out to all the other organizations because definitely, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of other arts organizations that have moved before us and done extraordinary things. One of our uh, main inspirations was uh, the Barrio Studios in Los Angeles. And it was something that was created in the, well, of course, in the 70s. And it was an old, it looked like a, kind of what I would see here as a hydro buck, like a, a truck, like an electrician's uh, van that they turned into a mobile art studio that would help them get out into, you know, underserved communities and connect and create with those neighborhoods that were often ignored by the fine arts world. And to a certain extent, that's one of the things we're trying to do here too. Um, just reconnect with those underserved communities, those marginalized communities and individuals whose voices haven't had the chance to be represented yet or heard, or maybe, you know, different kinds of art and cultural traditions that haven't had a platform. And if the living room can play a part in helping shine a light on those things and what they do, if only for their own communities, then that's a beautiful thing. So aren't we there yet? I got to check that out, Jay. And Crystal offering to sponsor you with the graphics for the bus. Crystal, wow. Wow. Okay. I might be in contact with you. We've got a few things to figure out before that point, but how lovely is that? Thank you. And this is the kind of awesome community we have here. People who's, you know, stepping out. Yeah, we've got an amazing community. And then coming back to Nicole, bumper stickers. That's, that's, Nicole's just typed bumper stickers, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And of course we're going to have bumper stickers. In fact, I might, uh, the back of the bus, the bumper of the bus, I haven't talked to Andres yet, but for those of you who know Andres Musta, uh, a lovely sticker artist out there in the community, you'll know him if you see him because his bus or his, he has a car that is covered with stickers, fantastic stickers that he's hand printed that other artists out there in the world have created. Uh, I think we need to have some part of the vehicle that's dedicated to slap art or sticker art a little miniature traveling exhibit that goes with us wherever we go. So, and bumper stickers, we've got to make our own bumper stickers, right? And Ashley's saying, oh, Miss Frizzle, is it, are you think she's long gone by now? Are you referring to Miss Frizzle? Oh no, oh my goodness. Just as I'm discovering her. Well, we'll have to figure, figure that out. I'll go back in time, do some research. And Nikki's saying, hello, Nikki. Nikki says, please ask the Student Association at Durham College. They are very willing to support students and you have a perfect parking spot in the park in front of the building. Oh, Nikki, I'm going to do that. Thank you for the suggestion. That would be a dream come true. And I know um, there's other folks out there in post-secondary world, amazing people like yourself who have championed us all along the way. And we want to be there for students as well. We had a before the pandemic, we had a little pop-up art hive on campus, on Durham, camp, uh, Durham College campus. Uh, of course, obviously, that hasn't been able to happen in the last year. But now we can take the whole mobile arts studio to all the campuses everywhere and provide that creative engagement and wellness for students wherever they might be. So definitely, I'm going to get in touch. Maybe I'll send them the video and we can see what they think. Of course, there's still a little time before we can have it on the road. But again, hopefully the insurance will work out and we can have it back at least in Oshawa this week or early next week so that we can begin the next step of its conversion. And uh, fantastic, Teresa saying, I can make vinyl logos for the bus. What? Look at this. We're learning about all these extraordinary talents from our community. Uh, Lottie saying, living room on the move. You bet. You bet, Lottie. If only I could get it over to the UK. But you have We Art, are we, aren't we there yet? And I see Jay has just <laughs> put up the link for this couple turn old school bus into, into a studio, is it? I'll have to look and do a deep dive into that afterwards. Um, and, you know, to be fair, for anyone out there who's interested, you could do a deep dive, the schooling movement. All you have to do is go onto YouTube and start exploring You'll be on there for hours, hours. 
there are so many amazing schoolie projects happening. Not all of them. Um, I mean, fewer in Canada. I think at West there are some, but this is still new, new territory here to the large part. People are still exploring. And, you know, Ontario specifically is known for being a kind of corporate province. So, uh, I think that's fair to say. We play it safe here. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't color outside the lines as much as we should, perhaps. Those other provinces, they just go for it. And Crystal says, oh, okay. Lost the connection, hope to get it back. Hope this message finds you. Crystal, no worries, I got it. Sometimes it just takes a little time and technology the way it is. You know what? I am patient. Everyone here is pretty patient. We hope to see you joining back the stream. That's one thing, if any of the Zooms or streams get a little uh, wonky for you, one thing you can do is just turn your computer off and on again and join in the stream again. Log out for a little bit. It could just be your computer getting a little grumpy. At least that's what I've found. And Ashley's saying, I think you should take some of the, oh, the old artwork from the studio and put it on the side of the bus. Um, well, you know, we do have a lot of art in storage. We might do that. One of the things we're actually looking forward to doing is not so much displaying art on the outside of the bus when we're moving around, but we're looking forward to hosting traveling exhibits. So it might look like, you know, setting up one day and everyone bringing their art to us and we can have it hanging up and for sale or we could have special, just lovely little things for the community where they can celebrate and honor the work that they do. One of my favorite experiences at the living room space was a traveling art exhibit that we did in honor of truth and reconciliation. And this was something uh, put together by the Montreal Art Hives, the Concordia Art Hive, I think and they invited artists from across the country to make art about what re reconciliation looked like to them and to really deeply consider the processes involved in that and their role, each one of our own, like our role in, you know, truth and reconciliation. What does truth mean? What does reconciliation mean? And people from across Canada created art and we would have discussions uh, and listening circles on that theme and so the art was mailed from one city to another and as it traveled of course more and more art was being sent out to the next art hive that was such a beautiful experience for us that i'd like to find a way to participate in something like that again and maybe even that's something the living room can initiate from time to time and especially if we have a mobile art studio we might be able to play a part in traveling that art from one place to the next so again another exciting idea to consider there's so many ideas. There's never a shortage of ideas, right? Look at this community alone. We are a resource, an unbelievable resource. It's just about one step at a time and making sure all those ideas come together in the right way. Oh, and Nicole giving everyone an update. What day is it today? Nicole with her fantastic calendar. Today is Sally Ride Day. Apparently she was the first American woman in space. Huh, well, happy Sally Ride Day, everyone. That's definitely something to celebrate, don't you think? That's fantastic. <laughs> and the Miss Frizzle thing coming back, just on, on the age of Miss Frizzle. How old is Miss Frizzle? If someone out there wants to do the research, let's figure this out. Ashley's saying she would be super old by now because <laughs> Ashley's old now. Well, what do I, what do I have to say as someone who's Maybe I'm, maybe I am Miss Frizzle's age. Maybe, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, and Ashley says, can you transfer the artwork into decals? It is possible uh, that was left over from the studio. And absolutely, that's something that we can do. And depending on the design of the bus, um, I think that's one of the other exciting project ideas we were considering is perhaps working with different artists over time uh, to uh, create art for the outside of the bus. And as we move forward, maybe the artists in the community we work with, maybe we can do different, oh, I don't know, contests or exhibits where we can incorporate their work. 
onto the outside of the bus. But again, we need to see what it looks like. We need to talk to the conversion folks about the surface of the bus to see if it's something uh, that can be maintained. But we're thinking about that kind of stuff, absolutely. And Nikki says, and Trent University, Durham, I will come and help you anywhere at the colleges and universities. Oh, wow. Nikki, that's so, 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 so amazing. Yes, we will figure it out. This is, again, just like a lovely opportunity for us to actually get out there in a way that is meaningful to the students. The, the studio space, every art hive is lovely. And for anyone out there who's had a chance to visit a physical art hive space, you understand what I'm talking about. There's just this, I don't think anything will ever replace that energy, right? And every art hive is different because every community is different. So that's what makes them so, so interesting. When I'm in Montreal, the art hives there, of course, are just, you know, just, just different, fantastic, creative, um, we all have common ground with some of the issues we might encounter and the needs, some of the needs that are out there in the community. But depending on the community and the relationship they might already have with art, they might already be doing interesting things like in one hive music and theater might take center stage, so to speak, because that community is just more familiar with music and theater and dance. Uh, in our space at the studio, it was mostly visual art that was created and because we had guitars and ukuleles and the piano there, uh, music just seemed to happen every day. What will the mobile art studio look like? How will people's creativity be represented there? That's going to be a part of the adventure. It's going to be part of that. It's going to be really, really, really interesting to explore and discover how having an impermanent space contributes to that. Uh, Carlos saying, oh, excellent. Carlos has the answers. Miss Frizzle was in a follow-up series where her sister, <laughs> Ms. Frizzle, took over the reins of the Magic School Bus for the next generation. It was awesome. Is that a real thing? The bus project is sounding wonderful, Mary. A connective and vibrant tool to reach out within communities. I certainly hope so. I know it won't be the same, uh, but I'm hoping the differentness about it will be the th just as valuable. I think it was you, Carlos, who ta was talking to me mentioned that we were talking about five years. Five years, every five years things grow or evolve in some way. There's a natural pattern out there. And it would be interesting to know folks if you're out there and you're listening, if you've experienced this as well. Like five years, every five years, things shift, things change, things grow, or you have um, a desire to shake things up or change things, rupture things in a positive way. I know, and Ashley, yes, I know Ms. Frizzle was a cartoon. I do know that. <laughs> I know that much about the series. <laughs> I do, I do know that. I do know that. Um, but yes, so that five years, every time five years comes around, there's an urge to change and shake things up. And I feel like it's the right time for a project like this. It's the right time to explore uh, what community making looks like, place making looks like, but on the community's terms, if that makes sense. Because this is where my, thought were, my thoughts were going before. When we had the actual physical space, some people could come in. A lot of people came in. I think in an average year, we would have over, let's see, in our last year, open three days a week, we had around 15,000 visits from community members across the year. And that's a lot, right? That's a lot. But for folks who lived farther away or who had to move or perhaps could not travel as easily due to mobility or health or mental health issues or financial issues, this, you know, getting out to the studio was sometimes a barrier. Once they were there, it was fantastic and fine, but getting to the studio was an issue. So now we'll see what happens. We'll see what we can do. Oh, Ashley's saying sorry. No, 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 no. Dude, like there's plenty I don't know, folks. 
Keep me accountable. Let me know. In doubt, just ask. In doubt, just ask. And it wouldn't be the first time where I've, in my mind, brought a cartoon character to life. There are characters out there that I think of as friends and allies. And they're just as real to me as any one of you. <laughs> Is that strange? All right, what am I going to do here? And Nicole saying, when I was in high school, my teacher had us write a letter to our future selves. Ah, oh, then he mailed it to us five years later. Did he really? That, what a teacher. What a teacher. I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape on the back of that because I wanna know what so like, is the top of this paper because now what I'm going to do, oh boy, I haven't done this in a while, so bear with me, folks. I just want to make sure I have lots of color laid out on this. I've always, teachers like that, who have that, that forethought, that place of, the presence of mind to plan in advance, to engage their students in such an exciting way. How did you feel when you received that letter, Nicole? I think that would have blown my mind. That would have absolutely thrilled me. And not only to receive the letter knowing that the teacher remembered that, but also just to see, you know, that letter that you sent yourself. That must have... It's a beautiful thing. I recommend it to anyone. It's I've only, I've only done that once with myself, mailed a letter to myself, and it was pretty impactful. Yeah, maybe we'll save that for another live stream, but I'd love to know what it was like for you, Nicole. All right, here we go. So I've created this. Now I'm going to cover it up. Let's see if this works. And the idea is that once we have this covered, we scratch through the surface to reveal what's underneath, to create a whole other design. It's one of my favorite techniques to use with oil pastel. And it's something really simple that everyone can do. Sometimes it works, uh, it always works but sometimes it doesn't exactly work out the way you want it to. So it's a happy surprise, a happy accident. And of course we know. <laughs> accidents are one of my favorite things in art world. Art accidents anyways. Let's see, Teresa says, Mary, somebody asked me that if you are still receiving donations. Aha, so. What is the answer to that question? The living room survives and thrives off of donations, financial donations, but also material donations. And, but right now, because we don't have the same amount of space that we have, and we haven't gotten to a point where we're giving out donations, um, I'm, the short answer is yes. <laughs> But we're not, ex we're not necessarily accepting all donations right now. At the studio space, we had the capacity to sort through things and process things a little more effectively than we do right now, because things are being sorted through and, uh, and processed in my home. Um, so we're just a little more selective right now. Uh, and that's, but I am also so appreciative of all the donations that come our way. If someone's out there and they absolutely have stuff and they're like, I got to get rid of this stuff and I wanted to go to the living room, you can tell them to email me and let me know. And if we can do a porch drop off, uh, that's probably the best, best thing. There's a couple of pickups that I still want to do, but they're harder to arrange and make possible, especially when we're when stay at home orders are on. Um, but we are still taking donations, but if, not as regularly and if people so if people have things that need a home what I'll recommend is that you connect with a lot of the other awesome arts organizations that are out there especially if you need to get rid of it right right now today um, 
Oh, hello, Shelly. Welcome. Oh, no. So Shelly having some tech tech issues, too. Oh, Shelly, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Computers, huh? I think all our computers after a year and a half of being online in this way are a little bit grumpy. They're like, they need a vacation, too. They need a weekend off. Um, but just on the subject of donations, email me. There are some donations where if they can be dropped off easily, we'll take them. Other donations we might recommend uh, sharing with other arts organizations in the community instead. There are a lot of other amazing organizations that can make use of the fabulous uh, materials that folks have on hand. Uh, and then of course, once we get out into the community and start distributing workshop kits again and doing activities with people, we're gonna get back into that groove where we can take on more and more donations as they come in and we'll be going through supplies on a much, well, I guess quicker basis. Um, because we loved the food truck theme idea so much. We're actually thinking of it, incorporating it somehow into the mobile art studio. Um, so I think we'll have a menu, a menu of workshop kits that people can select from when they arrive at the, at the mobile art studio. And there'll probably be some regular ones that we always have because there are certain materials that we always have on hand at the studio. And then there'll be other more specialized activities and workshop kits, perhaps if we have a more limited supply of certain things. And we'll be promoting those things as we go and just finding really interesting ways to distribute materials, get them out there. Uh, yeah, we're feeding creativity, Nicole. That's an excellent way of putting it. Feeding creativity. Um, nourishing that creativity out in the community. And we recognize too, even at the studio, people didn't always have time to sit down and make art. They had time to drop by, to visit. So we're hoping that by having workshop kits that people can make on site if they like, or take them with them, take home, that we'll just be finding new ways of inspiring that. And they, you know, they might be as simple as collage kits or CD scratch workshop kits, or maybe there'll be knitting kits. And we'll also be, I know a lot of folks have been asking about this as well, uh, but we'll also be getting back into having our stuff a bag yard sales. They'll look a little different and we'll be going community to community. And depending on what we have, uh, yeah, we'll have to figure out a whole new way of doing it. But the stuff a bag yard sales were always really popular and we know uh, they were great opportunities for people to pick up supplies and interesting things. A lot of teachers out there, a lot of early childcare youth workers who used to love coming to those yard sales. Uh, don't worry, those will be coming back as well. And we have a whole storage space stuffed to the gills with really cool stuff. We can't wait to get it out there into your hands. And let's see, Sh oh, Jay saying, oh, I'm having too much uh, fun with this. The mobile, ima oh, wow, Jay is on fire naming. Uh, the mobile imagination, the imagination machine, the Nimbus, oh, <laughs> Nimbus, as a splendid atmosphere or aura as of glamour that surrounds a person or thing. All of those names are amazing. And I did see a comment, I thought I saw a comment from Ashley, I think. Oh, it's not there anymore, but you know what? I think it's... Uh, worth worth sparking again that question was when the mobile art studio comes back will we still have online programming and the answer to that is yes yes yeah we will be having um uh, all right let me start on this next step i've been talking so much today i'm so excited folks here we go um people have really really responded to the online programming. And we've been able to connect with people in ways that we never thought, we never imagined before, you know? Like if Lottie is still here on the live stream, for example, who knew? Who knew we'd be connecting with folks in the UK? Who knew that people, you know, like Audrey jumping in every once in a while from France to say hello, or people from the States tuning in to, connect and chat and meet other creative people. Our community has expanded so much because of the virtual art hive programming we've been doing. We're not gonna let this go. We are going to keep on doing this. Depending on where our funding at and where our time is at, uh, how often we're able to do it might shift, but at least, at least once a week, I'm hoping twice a week, we'll continue uh, some form of virtual programming. We might even have it uh, coincide with some of the workshop kits that we distribute 
uh, through the mobile art studio. So we can issue, we can say, here's a kit for this activity, tune in on this day or visit YouTube to watch the accompanying workshop online, right? So there are lots of different and interesting ways we can do this. And yeah, I love that. I love that we're not limited to just having one, doing one thing in one way anymore. Even though it's a little bit scary, it's a little bit intimidating, it's super exciting. And let's see, Shelly's saying, in search of plain rug hooking mesh, ooh, your mom's rug is falling apart and I would love to save it because it has been made by me and after she died, it was given back to me, but rug hooking rug is falling apart. So shout out to anyone who's listening. Uh, Shelly is looking for some of that rug hooking mesh. And if anyone is out there who wants to put up a link to what that might look like, if there's an image search that we can do, because I think rug hooking, uh, there's two different rug hookings that I'm familiar with. One is a traditional East Coast uh, kind of thing where you use a burlap backing and then pull uh, wool strips through it. And then there's rug hooking with the yarn, which is super fun. It has such a beautiful effect. And that requires a little open, an open weave mesh designed specially for that. I don't think we have any of that right now, even in storage. But there might be someone out there watching or listening right now, Shelley, that does have it. And they might have exactly what you need. Because it would be so lovely to save that and to repair it or reinforce it. So that, oh, oh, hello. A call coming in. Oh, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> um, being able to save that would be really important to reinforce it. And we have so many wonderful people out in this community. If you're watching right now, or perhaps you're watching once this stream has been archived, if you have some of that material that you would like to share. Shelley, would it be okay if people messaged you through Facebook by clicking on your name here and just sent you a direct message? And that way, see what we have here and of course if we find any there are certain things that have been in my mind for a long time now and I'm going to put I put things aside when they do come in if I know there are community members out there who really love working with specific uh, supplies or uh, specific mediums and David hello again David some oh excellent yeah some hookers and that's you know what they do call themselves uh, in Newfoundland at least also use small strips of reclaimed fabrics and that's one of the traditions I love about rug hooking uh, is that it emerged from a make do and mend kind of situation didn't it Nate David where people would you wouldn't throw away your old clothes or bedding or even the sacking that you used to create uh, the underside your base of your rug uh, you'd just repurpose and upcycle everything um, and as a result you have really beautiful beautiful uh, one-of-a-kind pieces that have character that tell a story beyond the image that's on them and if anyone wants to do a deep dive into the tradition of rug hooking I invite you to do so it's there's some beautiful extraordinarily gifted artists out there within in the East Coast we have a fabulous uh, tradition of rug hooking that in my mind is underappreciated and it's worth honoring it's worth celebrating <laughs> oh no oh yes and so Shelly says yes um, and interesting Shelly's saying that that rug hooking mesh for the open weaved uh, yarn rug hooking it's uh, Shelly hasn't been able to find it online to purchase it so this is even more important I imagine usually it comes in kits but someone might have a kit out there that they haven't used or that they know they're not going to complete and this would be a perfect time to pass that along to Shelly Shelly gives you permission just click on Shelly's name there in the comments and send her a message to see if you can do a porch drop off or maybe an exchange. So we'll work on that, Shelley. We'll keep on working. And Anthony, Anthony says, <laughs> couldn't figure out how to post a picture in the comments. So here's a link to Miss Frizzle, Miss Mary Frizzle or Frizzle Cronert. Oh, Anthony. Oh, Anthony. <laughs> what would I do without you? <laughs> 
And Lottie saying, I really appreciate the virtual art hive with stay at home orders and university being virtual. I don't get to properly connect with other creatives and also have the choice of what I do during the 90 minutes and also getting inspiration and feedback off of the other members. I will forever be grateful for this community. Oh, Lottie, I feel exactly the same way. And that's one of the reasons why this will continue. I really enjoy having this time to connect. Um, and I experience the exact same things. It's just as rewarding for me to be here and to have this time. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for putting that into words because I think there are probably a lot of people out there who feel the same way. I think, you know, it's one of the things right now that, you know, we're getting used to this idea that things will be returning to some kind of normal. And for some of us, myself included, there are things I don't want to lose from this time. There's things I've learned about myself. There's things I've learned about my community. Um, and I don't want to lose those things. And connecting virtually, having virtual art hive time has been enormously helpful and healing for me. And that's one of the reasons why I want to continue it, to make space for different types of connection and there's something about a live stream, you know, where we can just listen wherever you're at. You can listen, you can watch, you can be in the background if you like. You don't, you can choose how much you engage and the way you engage, depending on the kind of day you're having. And I really, really, really like that. I really like that. And even Zooms, like I, you know, Zooms have a wonderful place. And I think we're going to try and do Zooms as well. Um, like the writer Zoom, I'm excited to see, you know, so next Wednesday, look out for that folks, next Wednesday morning, Eastern Standard Time. Um, it will be, you know, it'll be really interesting to see what we take away from this. And it'll, I think there'll be a, a period of adjustment that comes along with it as we, each one of us decides what we want to hold on to and what we want to create. I don't know. And Carlos says, this has been beautiful to connect with y'all. Alas, I need to head off for now. Oh, well, take care, Carlos. Uh, but Carlos says, thanks for this awesome hang time and creative space. Have a great and safe day, folks. Likewise, Carlos. And for anyone else that needs to go, you, you're welcome to it. I know that not everyone can stay and hang around for the full hour and a half. There's some folks who do, and that's awesome. I'm so glad you're here. But if you need to go to run errands, or to help, I know that, you know, this is what, I guess kids are getting out of school around now. Some kids are at virtual school. Maybe you need to do groceries. Maybe you need to head off to work. All of that is okay. Don't feel like you need to hang around just because of me, right? You know where to find me. <laughs> and as always, that self-care, doing what you need to do to take care of yourself is such an important thing. I haven't done this kind of art in such a long time. I gotta say, folks, I'm enjoying it. The effect is... It's just a kind of fun effect, isn't it? I know, Ashley's saying that's really cool and absolutely give it a go. I've seen people do this with crayons before too, although the colors are, you know, tend to be a little more muted. Oil pastels, some people don't always like the way they feel because they're a little bit, well, oily, a little bit sticky, oily. But the colors, the pigments are so vibrant. And you can get some really, really interesting effects. And this actually came out of, if Jay is still watching or listening, there's a workshop that Jay did years ago at the studio with um, do, 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 charcoal, where you cover a page in charcoal and then you use an eraser to remove the charcoal to create your image. And I've been thinking about that workshop forever, Jay. And I might just have to get you to do a live stream about it, <laughs> to tell you the truth. But a similar, a similar effect, where you can have, you know, this beautiful reveal in that unexpected way. And 
having a tool like this is kind of fun. The stylus tool that allows you to carve out or scrape things. I think these are used in clay quite a bit. Um, but yeah, you can also use these in graffito work. Before I was using these as well, these lace crochet hooks. I don't know if you can see them here because I couldn't find this because, you know, you can never find the thing you want when you want it. I had to do a little bit of digging around to find this. And Jay says, yes, about that charcoal removal technique. Jay loves it, still uses that technique. It's one of your favorites. Excellent. It's just such a beautiful and such an effective thing. Something that really just makes you go, wow, right? And Wendy says, I have done an effect like this. You paint the paper and then cover it with blue crayon. <gasps> what? Wendy, Wendy. Okay, so I need to try that. So it's paint like acrylic paint onto the paper and then crayon over top of the paint. See folks, this is why we have creative community because there are things, there's not one of us knows everything. Not one of us knows everything. But together, wowzer, do we not make an excellent art hive. One of my favorite things about community and one of the things I miss most about being in studio or making art with people is seeing all the different techniques they use to such extraordinary effect. And things that you just wouldn't think about. And this has that effect of like printmaking. And in fact, I've seen people use this uh, technique with printing because the oil pastel can layer up so effectively. If I were to put another piece of paper on top of this and print it or turn it over and draw onto it, it the oil pastel would transfer onto the other page. So then you get a double image coming from it. Does that make sense? And Jay says, I think the name for the technique is lifting because you cover the page and then use the eraser to lift the charcoal off and you essentially are drawing with an eraser. It's such an awesome technique. That is true. Love, 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 love. I think it's a lovely technique to use with anyone who's like maybe nervous about making art again. Because again, making space for those happy accidents. I think people can't help but have that moment of surprise with what emerges. even if you think you can't draw or create anything at all. Of course, you could do this and have an abstract design as well. I've just got sunflowers on the brain. I planted so many sunflower seeds this spring Got them in my little greenhouse, but uh, let's see, I must have planted about 30, but I think only 15 have come up. But I'm going to plant more. I'm not giving up. So let's see, let's have a close up look at this and see what the impact is. So an interesting, so, so, so interesting, what you can do with this technique, right? And it does make me just 
just want to keep on <laughs> graffitoing. Let's put in some scraffito clouds here. I'm beginning to feel a little Bob Ross now. A little Bob Ross vibe coming in with my scraffito clouds. Of course, I can imagine mandalas or those, you know, beautiful geocentric designs. And they create scratch pads now as well. So you can, I think, purchase um, sort of pre-prepared tablets or pa paper. that you can scratch off and underneath they'll have different surfaces and things like that. Now, I don't want to do too much more. Oh, this is nice. I'm enjoying this, folks. But let's create a little horizon line. as well just to an extent. You do get if they stay on your surfaces they can kind of melt and stick and then next thing you know you put down another piece of paper or a canvas or a piece of fabric and suddenly you're getting oil pastel everywhere. And you think where did that oil pastel come from? I haven't used oil pastel today. Well <laughs> Oh, do I hear rain coming? Oh, my hopes are up, folks. I really hope we have some rain soon. Hello again, Em. My, oh, well, Em says may need to go now. It was lovely spending time with you all. Take good care. And right back at to Em. We hope to see you again back at another virtual art hive. You know where to find us now. We're here every Wednesday, folks, live streaming from 2 to 3.30 p.m. And, of course, uh, next week we will be returning to our artist chat live streams on Instagram. So be sure to tune in for those. We have some amazing guests coming next week. Let's see, another little close-up on that. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to leave it there, let it be. I might revisit that landscape, take another look at it, maybe frame it. Sometimes looking at it through a frame really helps give you a sense of what's needed. Or in a mirror, sometimes that's really helpful as well. We shall see, we shall see, we shall see. But for now, yeah. That makes sense to me. But one more thing. Just a little bit more detail there. Because it's fun.
next week we actually have uh, some friends of mine who are at BC Way, who are fantastic artists, woodworking, painting, illustrating, every different kind of thing you can imagine. We will be joined by Mark and Claire from March Light. Now I know them as March Light, but you might, they might also be just known as Mark and Claire. That's one of the things maybe we'll have to clarify with them. Fabulous creators who do fabulous things in fabulous ways. And we love shining a light on what folks are doing. So please make sure to tune in for that. Yes, is that a good place to leave it? Maybe. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, folks. Boop, boop, boop. I think I'm going to begin wrapping up as well. Normally I push the time and I'm just going, going, going until the very last minute with you. Um, and you know what, who knows, maybe I might dip in and create a little more with this later on. But I do love this technique. And if you haven't given it a go before, please do try it. It's so much fun. Just need some simple oil pastels or you can try the technique that Wendy was mentioning, painting on paper and then covering it with crayon to remove. Or like Jay, using that charcoal uh, or graphite to cover a page and then painting with an eraser. It's such an interesting technique, so much fun. Um, and one that really gives fascinating impact and effect. And just to play with it. You don't need to know a whole lot or even think you can do it to give it a try, right? If you feel like making art, just make art and see where it takes you. But Thank you again so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure having you here. I really enjoyed making art and answering questions about the Mobile Art Studio. If you do have any other thoughts, suggestions, questions, of course you can feel free to email me at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org. Longest email in the world, but that's probably the best way to get a hold of me these days. And when you send an email to the studio, it comes to me. It might take me a little while to respond, but I do respond. Um, Thanks so much for being here and making art. I hope everyone has been having a safe and relaxing week and that the rest of the week unfolds in the best possible way for you. If you've been having a rough time, I hope that we've been able to bring you a little bit of joy, a little bit of inspiration today and that things moving forward get brighter and, well, brighter is good, isn't it? Even if the skies get a little dark for the time being. And thank you, Lottie, for being here. Oh, and yes, for that art that Jay was mentioning, the gummy erasers are best. The ones you can squish and mold, just keep that in mind as well. They do kind of feel like putty, don't they? I've used just regular erasers as well, but you can't get the same sharp, sharp drawing lines that you do with that putty eraser. So if you're lucky enough to have one of those on hand, go for it. Or you can choose an old pencil that you're not going to use the eraser for anything else to sort of um, dedicate to your charcoal lifting work that you do. And Teresa says, enjoy the rest of your day. I echo that and thank you, Jay. Thank you as well. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in. Keep an eye out for uh, this Thursday's live stream in the evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Facebook main page where we'll have a guest artist coming to you. Who knows, maybe Jay, uh, with some fabulous creative hangout time. And we'll be back on Tuesday with a live stream with Mark and Claire out in BC and back next Wednesday. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what else is happening. Oh yeah, back next Wednesday for another live stream. Thursday morning for a writer's group. Thursday, not Wednesday, Thursday. You know what? Check the Facebook events, folks. My brain gets scrambled sometime, but if you check the Facebook events, they won't really ever lead you astray. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the best place right now to keep up to date about what's happening happening in living room land and how you can take part. Um, but for now, everyone, until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I look forward to creating and connecting with you right here online. It's always a pleasure. And I always leave these opportunities feeling renewed. I hope you do too. Take care, stay safe, and keep creating, okay? Have a wonderful day. Bye, folks.